Brian Byrne on Cam Glen Radio. Our artist of the week is The Alarm, and I'm hopefully joined on the line by Eddie McDonald from The Alarm. Hello, Eddie. Ah, uh, Brian, how are you? I'm great. First of all, thanks very much for joining us tonight, All Things Alarm. The Alarm is the artist of the week, but I wanted to start off by asking you a wee bit about um, your most recent musical journey, uh, Small Town Glory. How did that come about? Ah, it's through songwriting. Um, I must admit, um, since uh, Mike and I parted company sort of um, a few years ago, it was great just to write songs again and put a whole load of songs together. And a friend of mine said to me, look, I want to sing those with you. And I went, give it a try and see how we come on, you know, get it together. And you, had, the mate Charlie joined us and that was it. So Small Town Glory was born. Had you not been writing at all in between finishing working with Mike and recently or did you have a big backlog of stuff? No, it just came basically over a couple of weekends. I mean, I've always played guitar. Like most things, you know, I love playing guitar. I, really, I sort of really miss doing shows and things. And just started writing songs. And I had my guitar sitting in the corner. It was gathering dust, picked it up. And then the moment I did, I, did, I didn't stop. Do you have like a number of songs sitting waiting for future releases? Yeah, well, at the moment, we're about to start working on part two. We've got quite a lot of songs sort of ready to go. And uh, basically, to get, getting ourselves ready to hopefully do a debut in March next year. So we've just got a new drummer on board. And so basically, we're sort of up and ready to go, which is really exciting. Uh, are we here in uh, debut in terms of live shows or? That's it. Yeah, it, we are indeed. Fantastic. We're going to make an announcement. I think it's going to be early next week at the moment. We, we're probably going to start off with just one show, do our first show and then look into possibly doing lots of festivals and bits and bobs come the following summer. Yeah, a good friend, a friend of mine, Jamie McMonigle, got in touch to ask if there was any plans for live shows, so that's fantastic. Was it easy for you to put the band together? Was there people close to you that sort of fell into place, yeah. or did you go looking? No, I mean, Paul Thing has been my friend for donkey's years. He's a really lovely guy, and he's, I love his voice. And uh, I've seen him play live, and he's great live. I, I just wanted to have a band that would be really good live as well. Yeah. You know, it's all very well writing songs, but trying to write songs with live performance in mind. I mean, you can't not have been in the alarm and want to play live because the alarm is a great band to go and see live. And that's the sort of essence I want to capture in Small Town Glory. That would be a great live app, but with songs that are unique to Small Town Glory. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, part of the brilliance of the alarm was not only the songs, which everybody enjoyed, but the live event was just electrifying. It was such a, a brilliant experience. And we were lucky because we honestly were gifted some great shows. I believe a show that you were at was If Little Fingers at Glasgow Apollo. I mean, Jake and the boys were fantastic to us. They were great to give us their final two shows of that period. Yeah. And obviously not forgetting you two and also Big Country. I mean, bands that, you know, we'd loved and then offered us, you know, support shows at a really important in time in the Alarms career. We were just gifted and we were so grateful for the support. But I think all the bands, I mean, the common thread between you and all of the bands was they were all brilliant live performers. They played so well in front of an audience. Yeah, they started from the ground up and they were, they were genuine bands. You know, they, wasn't, they weren't hyped. You know, they worked their asses off to get where they were. Yeah. And that proved it in the live shows. I mean, that you're just talking about some of the best live bands, you know, Britain's ever produced. Without a doubt. Tell them commandments that come out this year obviously on itunes and you put the ep out did it through the pledge was that something you you, you thought was important uh, to get the, the people involved in terms of the release it was because basically we financed the record ourselves and then we decided to do a pledge because they had a really good platform to reach people i, yeah. mean, I mean it's best some, when technology really works well is when it can get the message out and pledge was really brilliant in that because people could see what we were doing talking about how we were going to do it because we'd already made the record, so most people try and do pledges now before they do an event or yeah. make a record. But we made the record first, and I felt confident that people could get into the record once they hear it. I mean, and some of the, some of the reviews, awesome. yeah, some of the reviews, the comments that I've seen, you know, was just unbelievable. Although I did, I did get one question from Steve Green, one of the listeners. He wanted to know why Third Light didn't make it onto the actual hard physical EP copy that oldies like me and him want to take home and file away and that kind of thing. How, what was the thoughts there? The honest answer was, originally we wanted something special for everybody who pledged towards the record, so they'd have something themselves, and it was the way of having the electronic interaction between people, so people could download the EP 
or they could buy a physical copy, yeah. a physical CD, and um, or a vinyl. So basically, it was something that it was to bring us closer together. So it's not trying to say this small sound glory. I wanted to be uniquely small sound glory, but obviously with digital, you can be a little bit more flexible with it as well. And that was the reason behind it. Cool. I mean, I wanted to ask you. You mentioned it earlier on, but you know, in between finishing up with Alarm and obviously Small Town Glory, and we all know that your career uh, went into photography. What was the thought process there? How, what made you move away from music into that that area? I mean, when the band sort of broke, I wanted to go and do something else, and I came up with an idea about doing a book on tattoos, and literally I spent six months in the British Museum just going through the whole history and heritage of tattoos, and realising I had an idea for a book, but I would need to do the work myself. So eventually I ended up going back to college and retrained, so I started again from scratch. Amazing. Um, and I worked with some great photographers that we'd worked with with the band, Yeah. and they were really supportive, and they could see what I was trying to do. And it's just like a mission. You just go off and do one yourself and basically ended up making a career out of it, which I thoroughly have most music and photography in my creative element. It's just a, a dream come true, really, because I love both. I mean, you see that a lot, a lot creative people in the music business. I mean, they've got that sideline of uh, either photography or painting or, you know, creative side uh, to yeah. it. Uh, yeah, great stuff. Um, I couldn't have you on the line um, without asking you about Euro 2016. How did that work out for you? <laughs> Yeah, uh, to quote Bill Hicks, they had to get me off the ceiling with a rake. Oh, really? was so high at that point. <laughs> yeah, it was, just, it was incredible. I must admit, I've waited all my life. I remember years ago, um, Mike and I were sitting in the opposite end of some of your boys that are in Scotland, mm -hmm. in, in a certain ground oh, really? in Cardiff. And um, we'd already written the song that was going to be the World Cup song for Wales. We'd already talked to Mike England at the time, saying, we've got this song, we're going to do it for Wales. And, of course, it didn't happen. <laughs> I feel you're going to hang up. So, that, finally, right? after all those years of pain, we finally got the game, which is great. So, are you working on the World Cup tune for 2020? <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Absolutely. I mean, uh, who knows? <laughs> Uh, as I say, tonight uh, we're celebrating all things Alarm. Every week we have an Artist of the Week and, and this week it's, it's going to be the Alarm. I just want to ask you a couple of quick questions about the band. From your own point of view, l looking back, is there any particular highlight f from your time in the Alarm? Yeah, I suppose the one thing that really stood out, I mean, we did a free show in Los Angeles. I mean, we played some great venues and great audiences around the world. We're very, very fortunate to travel a lot. But we did a, a free show that was televised all around the world. It's the first ever global broadcast on MTV. It's called um, at UCLA. And it's called the sort of Spirit of 76 or Spirit of 86 in the end it became. And um, that was probably one of the greatest moments in my life because it was just all of us it, it was accumulation of everything we'd achieved as a band at that point mm -hmm. and uh, just amazing also that's going to somehow tie into the gig that um, Small Towns of Glory are going to do in March next year we're going to announce it where it's going to be and also it's got a link to that as well Fantastic. so any alarm fans out there you want to keep your ears open and eyes open for that yeah. one I think it's, there's, there's something really special going to happen so I mean that was it but also playing with Queen at Wembley I mean, everybody goes to support band you go who would you like to support well I think playing with Queen was one of the, the, sort of the greatest moments actually that's one of their few final shows and you walk out at Wembley and it's like wow yeah it was amazing seeing, walking out and seeing the Twin Towers at the time and that was just yeah it's absolutely astounding yeah dream come true and you've written so many classic songs over the years uh, for the alarm and do you have any particular one that stands out um, it's strange because I'm probably the biggest critic of the music as well as, as well as I love it and I remember on the first album one of the songs I loved was called Howling Wind but I don't think the song was anywhere near as good as it was live yeah. I always say that and so I wrote another song called Saw Me Down the River which was my rewrite of Howling Wind to make it sound better and we recorded that with Tony Visconti you know, he produced T-Rex then Lizzie and Bowie and I think that's probably one of my favourite songs actually nice especially bit, live it was, yeah a nice bit of guitar from Mr Sharp on that oh absolutely yeah it rocked I love that song and it was just it just was great to play live but sometimes you know you have favourite songs for different reasons I mean probably on that album it's Corridors of Power is probably one of my favourite songs on that record it's, it's probably one of my favourite songs of all time yeah I'll tell you what, Eddie, I know you're pressed for time. I just want to thank you for taking the time out to speak to us at Cam Glenn Radio. Um, it's a pleasure. And, no, and thanks for having me. Yeah. Do do? I just say hi to everybody listening, and you know, thanks for your support over the years. It's been a hell of a lot. Great stuff. I'll never Keep... forget my barrel land days, that's all I can say. I'm still shaking. From shaking. Uh, I mean, it was all, as I, I said to one of my colleagues before I came on air, I said, if you'd told me in sort of 1984, uh, 5, 6, 7, uh, the barrel lands, I'd be speaking to Eddie McDonald on, on the radio. 
as I said, you weren't off your head. So, um, pl- personal pleasure for me. And as I said, thank you for your time. Keep in touch. Let us know what's happening with Small Town Glory and we'll keep the word out there and high profile for you. That's marvellous. Many thanks and good luck to everything. Thanks again. Great stuff, Eddie. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks, Bye. Brian. Gambling Radio, 107.9 FM. Your voice, your music, and your station. <laughs>